GSL Code S. And what a fantastic day of GSL Code S this is. We've Flash. loaded up on pizza. Oh my God. Our toast has had some vegetarian That's pizza. That's right. You know what? The fine folks at Blizzard always looking out for me. Every time they come down, there's a vegetarian pizza brought up to us. I love you guys. You're so sweet. I want you guys to know that because I, I think I've spent, well, besides your wife, Artosis, I've spent more time with you than any other human. Yeah. Um, Oh, no, you still as, have as her. Plate. She's got a while to catch up, Faceless. <laughs> that, that, I, I have seen the plight uh, of Artosis' life trying to eat vegetarian food. And Korea is not accessible when it comes to vegetarian yeah. uh, cuisines. So all the Including dishes. pizza. Yeah, uh, all, we, we order pizza all the time, uh, like at restaurants together, and sometimes it still comes with meat. So when Artosis gets a normal meal, I get to feel normal for just a he gets moment. To feel, he gets to feel normal before he goes back to his thankless journey of being a vegetarian in an <laughs> accessible vegetarian yeah. country. Pretty awesome. Or vegetarianly inaccessible country. That's right. That's <laughs> Got to make sure I say that so it sounds right. <laughs> yeah, it sounds uh, really yeah, right. Yeah, it sounds me. really. It's, it sounded really smart when I said that. Um, so we got Avenge against Dark on the map Nimbus. All right. Uh, it is the losers match. The loser is out of here. You got to favor Dark. But Avenge played some really nice games before, so maybe he's got something up his sleeve. Let's see. You know, Avenge actually had some really surprisingly good strats, good games. Um, I feel that Dark should win this, but I mean, expect anything. Um, and that game is ready to go. This is the losers match. Whoever win, uh, whoever loses here, excuse me, is going to be knocked out of the GSL Code S, the final GSL Code S this year. In the bottom right, we have our Protoss player. He is Gino Greenwings Avenge. And in the upper left, we have our Zerg. SK Telecom T1 Dark. Right. So, uh, before we talk about this game, uh, yes. unless something. Oh, well, actually, nope, let's talk about this right now. Yeah. He's going for a quick pull. I thought we were going to have um, yeah. a little bit of downtime. I just Quite wanted to, a quick pull. I, I can't get over, by the way, that previous series we saw. Flash looks so much like a supercomputer and not like a human player. Well, that's what Flash is supposed to look like. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. Really, like supercomputers, the really good, well-functioning ones, look like Flash. All right. Uh, um, by the way, this looks like he's trying to cannon rush, which will actually counter this build very yeah, well. Yeah, I was, I was just looking at that. I'm like, oh, okay. We he's got gonna be completely safe. These two guys both trying to catch each other off guard. This is gonna turn into a very weird game. <laughs> yeah, he can just throw he's, up a cannon here, make a nexus, and he's got so a, like, oh, a bit of a lead. Oh, that works for me. Okay, I'll take that. Yeah. So, Aven should be very happy with himself and where he's at here. He's going to start that cannon in just a second. He'll see the Zerglings incoming. Okay, so there's the cannon. Now, just so you guys know, um, Avenge was not <laughs> going for this build so that he would have uh, stop a quick pull. He was actually yeah. planning on cannon rushing a hatchery uh, first. That is but one of the nice things, though, about it, is that, uh, you know, he can, oh, he can do both. That is annoying. Yeah. That is so annoying. That's that's totally the right thing to do there, to make the pile on there. Oh, pizza party. That's right. That's the wonderful man who brought me a vegetarian pizza. <laughs> also an invented Blizzard that makes all the best games. So, I mean, that's good, too. But the vegetarian pizza is what really strikes my heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, so we got the hatch coming up now. Um, <laughs> and... Um, this is, I gotta say, Zerg's not in the, the spot he wants to be in. No, certainly not. This is like probably the only build that he could have done that just really stomps it, you know? it's. I guess if you go for a quick gateway, you can be fine as well. Uh, but like, this is bad. It's 18 probes against uh, 13 drones, and on top of that, a quicker Nexus for Avenge. 
Yeah. Um, now, from here, Zerg is just playing from a deficit, which is very annoying. Mm -hmm. um, and this is also not what Dark had practiced at home. <laughs> no. This was not the scenario Dark was expecting to be in. No, he was really hoping it would be Nexus first into Gateway. Uh, yeah. You know, that's obviously a build that this is meant to counter. And it's the most common build, especially on a map like this. Which just makes Avenge uh, that much smarter for having switched up and gone for what was supposed to be a cannon. You know, I gotta say, Avenge is... Um, cons I mean, we had low expectations for Avenge coming into this today, but he actually has picked really good strats. Like, through and through. He certainly has. Uh, you know, he's he's playing the right way as the underdog, I would say. Yeah, yeah, I got He's not agree. just sitting there and being like, well, let's play a macro game that I'm going to lose. He's like, no, I mean, I'm going to I'm gonna do strategies that are going to give me some chance <laughs> to win. I'm going to catch you off guard every he's, now he's and then. He's making it the... His opponents play by his rules, really. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, I mean, from here, I, I got to say, it's a very straightforward game for a bench. I mean, I, I think one of the only ways, for at least the foreseeable future in this game, the only ways that Avenge can um, mess this up is something really simple like missing pylons, you know? Uh, or just forgetting something. Yeah. Which I don't think is going to happen because he looked so good in the series we casted of him earlier. Well, he's just completely safe. He even throws up the second pylon just in case. Even has that second uh, cannon going up. Uh, Avenge just kind of crossing every T and dotting every I. Getting some extra sentries right now. I wonder what his strategy is from here. Like, will he try something like an immortal push? Is he just going to go for the third base? I think he's just going to go into a third base and blink, to be honest. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's a fine way to do it. I think that, you know, <clears throat> this is a, a funny situation because it's one where Protoss gets to have such a lead. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, the, the usual fast expand builds from Protoss, you're always a little bit uncomfortable, actually. Yeah. Uh, you, you're having to squeeze out everything while still being safe. Uh, in this case, with Avenge having that lead early on, he actually can tech pretty comfortably. Yeah. Yeah, and it looks like he's going to. It looks like he'll be throwing up a, a Twilight Council in a moment here and taking a third base and should be pretty safe, but... It's kind of an interesting strategy here from Dark as well. Two bases going up to Lair and a Roach Horn. Might be getting very quick Roach speed here. Yeah, that's something he could definitely do. Well, I feel like for Dark, uh, he's probably going to do something pretty tricky. I would like to see how True would have played here, actually. Hmm. Since he's uh, the guy we casted yesterday who just always managed to get the spot where he's behind and actually make it work for him. Yeah, he, he was really good at that, so... We'll see how good Dark is at it. Now, if we see really careful play here from Avenge, the Roaches shouldn't be able to get too much done, but it's it's hard to do that. If I'm Avenge here, I'm really thinking, okay, you know what, I just gotta make that third Nexus. I swear to God, I thought you said if I'm a vegetarian here. What did, what did you say? If I'm Avenge here? Oh, if I'm Avenge here, okay. Right. I was like, well, you are a vegetarian. If I'm a vegetarian, yeah. <laughs> which I'm quickly becoming with his great play. <laughs> uh, now we have Blake coming here. That's right, Burrow on the way as well uh, for Dark. Kind of an interesting little mix-up to put in there. We've seen a little bit of this, the quick layer uh, with Burrow on Roaches. Sometimes you can get a lot of damage done. Okay, so he comes through now. Uh, does a little bit of scouting. Yeah, he sees that Roach speed is on the way, so that's the yeah. most important piece here. And that, yeah, that, that was the key, um, key fact that he had to get. Yeah. Is this is like Clue or something. He got the candlestick, and he knows it's Colonel Mustard now. So basically, basically, yeah. Basically, that's, yeah it's know. the most important part of scouting is definitely done for him, for now at least. But we have an infestation pick coming up, and I'm really wondering what this is for. Because he's getting Burrow very quickly. Yeah. And, and that could point towards Infestors. But, you know, it's not that popular to go for such quick Infestors right now. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> Bale Force Fields there. So he's going to back out. I, I, I am interested as well, as you were saying, Artosis, about the Burrow. What exactly does he have planned for us here with that? Uh, and he's now getting Swarm Hosts. Yeah. Four well, Swarm Hosts. A lot of probes on the way. He already has a Robo done, so that's really nice for him, getting those Enduring Locusts as well. Looks like the Burrow is probably just something to utilize his Roaches a little bit well, better. Well, you know, Burrow is never a bad uh, ability to upgrade. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's just there's so much you can do with it, so many scenarios where it's helpful that... I wouldn't mind seeing it just used more often, you know? Certainly, and we're seeing some top Zergs really start to get it a lot. Like, Leenok, for instance, gets that, like, basically every game really quickly. And uh, some of these other Zergs, like Yun or Symbol, 
Uh, really quite like it as well, but right now he doesn't really have a lot of Roshis. He's really focusing on these Swarm Hosts. He's skipping all armor upgrades, just going for attack upgrades, which makes sense because he's he's done all this off of a very low economy. This is a super low economy to go Swarm Hosts off of. In fact, he's only got three Queens, he's only got six Roaches, and he's doing nothing but make Swarm Hosts. So, very interesting the, the style with which Dark is approaching this game after such a strange opening. Yeah, um... This should be a, a, a long, dramatic game, by the way, guys. Yeah. Is there going uh, Swarm Host cross spots? Uh-oh, spotted that pylon. Oh, totally. It takes forever to get over there and actually get something done. But this is a scary army right now. There's not that many Swarm Hosts at the moment. And I also got to point out, we actually have two Robos that are going to be making Colossus very soon. And if you ask me, that is the perfect counter to something like this. When someone goes Swarm Host a little bit too quickly, if you go double Robo... Oh, oh, such a nice, nice snipe. snipe. Yeah, if you go double Robo Colossus, it's really hard for the Stormhost player to do anything because when you have such a low economy like this, making Stormhost, you can't afford as many Corruptors. So the Colossus really gets a lot of value, and I think that's what we're going to see here. I'm really feeling Avenge for this game. Yeah, I think Avenge is in really good shape here. Um, he's now going to come up here and just try to snipe this hatch, and I think this should be pretty effective, actually. He can yeah. just yeah, block out the uh, Stormhost. It's a huge snipe. He's forcing his opponent to be on three bases just like he is going Swarm Host against, you know, two Robo Colossus. It's a perfect situation. Okay, so uh, the uh, Zealot's just uh, not going to be too impactful here. No. He's doing a good job of just harassing, though. Nice job also taking out some Overlords here. I love this. He's just, he's super mobile right now using a Warp Prism, using Blink Stalkers well, and Sentries. I mean, this is how you're going to beat a player that, that's using Swarm Hosts, is the Swarm Hosts can't be attacking everywhere. They can actually yeah. be on a very specific part of the map, so uh, you want to use mobility to punish the Zerg. Everything about Dark, uh, or rather Avenge's play here, makes perfect sense. He's doing everything yeah. so well. Like, I even really like this Dark Shine because he's got the Warp Prism, he's got map dominance, he's equal on bases, he's about to have three Colossus out. This is and like a great time to make a DT. With a double Robo, he's pretty soon going to have enough Colossus to actually just take yeah. on the, the Locust from the Swarmos. I mean, he's like, he can actually start walking through it. At right around three Colossus, you can really start killing Locust and just push forward without really getting losses, especially against such a low number. But look at this. Six Corruptors on the way. He just doesn't have the economy to actually get enough Corruptors to make a big difference at the moment. There's, there's easily enough anti-air here to protect a, a big Colossus scout. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I think he's playing really, really well. I think he's given Dark a run for his money. A lot of this does, again, go back to that way that game looked early on. I think he's going to have to recall out of here. Uh, you might very well be right. I the think, one I, Colossus I stuck here. is not going to be yeah, enough. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Whoa, just gets out of there. That was close. What, what was the HP on that? Did you know? Uh, I'm not sure, I but it's... it's it was One scary. more volley like that kills it. Yeah. So, another couple seconds in. That could have been the stuck. moment where we're, where we're like, well, we got to take back everything we said because <laughs> yeah. uh, he just lost his entire army in that little nook on the map. Yeah, that he cannot lose that army. In fact, that was almost too dangerous. I almost feel like you should maybe sit way back, like just kind of patrol around for creep tumors while you wait for your additional boss. But he does have three now. So, as we see, he can start fighting against these locusts, but doesn't want to. If he can walk around, that's better. But he can he can push through things. We have this army now grouped up here in the middle. Now, um, it's pretty easy on this map specifically to play defensive Swarm Hosts, but offensive Swarm Hosts is actually a little bit risky here. Swarm, I mean, Swarm Hosts are not nimble units, guys. Um, and if he manages to isolate them and kill them off, it's really bad for Dark. Dark could just lose. Oh my god! Ooh, I, that time warp actually helped quite a bit. He started to get into kind of a poor position there, but... Whoa, 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 Five DTs. This is just how Avenge plays, man. He's taking this fourth base, a huge GT warp in. He's going to easily pick off that hatchery as well. Okay, he's pushing him back here. Oh, force fields come up. This is actually a great push by Dark, by the way. And look at this. A bunch oh more God. DTs. He is all over the place. This is so sick, actually. He's going to get... He's going to completely wreck... Uh, uh, Dark's economy. Everything that Dark has is right outside the Protoss' base. Protoss just needs to turtle hard. That's right, he just needs to weather the storm over there for the moment. He's got a huge economy, he's taking down multiple hatcheries, it looks like. The fourth base does fall, it's now four base against three with Protoss in the lead there. And in fact, it's going to oh get even God. worse I than think, that. I think 
Dark just died, man. Uh, I mean, he's getting everything. Now, hold on. Just don't lose his battle, uh, uh -oh. man. I mean, he's this is a possibility. He's starting to pick off Colossus. Those Stalkers just took a ton of damage, but the DTs continue to push forward. He does have Overseers, by the way, in this uh, attack, so DTs can't be used here, although it looks like that just doesn't matter. Wow. Damn, man. I mean, he is just so solid with these DTs. That is true, but uh, Dark's attack is being quite effective considering what's going on back at home. He's trying to clean this up. He's only well, I mean, got two bases, you know, so he's probably still dead. But Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. He has just two bases. I'm pretty sure with Protoss having an economy at four bases, he just eventually has to win this, right? I think so, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, it just man. gets worse. It gets worse and worse. Oh, my God. It just got even more worse. Oh. This is like... Worser and worser. Worser. It's going to be worse soon. Yeah. This is worse plus. Um, man. I mean... I can't... Okay, guys. This is how you beat Swarmhouse. You wanted to know it's get... Attack them be where the everywhere. swarm hosts are not. Yeah, be everywhere. It's almost like you get to be the Zerg or something, you know? Yeah, something like that. Like, you you want to be the one attacking with Lings and Mutas, but instead it's Zelts and DTs. Yeah, uh, look at that. Ooh, no detection still. But hold on. I mean, we still have these swarm hosts getting some value. There's only one Colossus left over here, although he does have three more sitting at home, so he's he going to want to join up. Double Robo, too. Yeah. Well, it, his army is, like, not really a beatable army, uh, but. Dark is getting, like, some favorable trades against it. He's picked off a lot of Colossus this game so far. I think he's killed, like, eight Colossus so far. Um, I don't know what exactly. I mean, I gotta say, I think Dark's doing a good job of hanging on here, but this is... He has almost none of the parts <laughs> uh, necessary to, to yeah. lead to a win here, you know? Well, he's at 29 drones against 70 probes. Think about this, the amount of hatches seven... he's killed, you know how low his production is now? Well... Yeah, I'm, the thing is, if he had a big economy, I'd be more <laughs> worried about yeah. that. Luckily, his economy is kind of weak, so. Okay, so this is how you do it. You just shift click on all these drones. Mm -hmm. DT just destroying this economy even more heavily. Avenge really loves DTs, man, and he's very good with them. Yeah, he's, this is actually some of the best DT play we've seen in StarCraft 2, actually. Mm -hmm. For sure. You now know, it's so funny, because with Protoss, normally DTs are kind of like the last minute... The oh crap, yeah, oh crap play. Like, but they're like a real part of his build order. He's like, well, yeah. at this point, I get the DTs because yeah, exactly. I can pull the Zerg around the map. <laughs> okay, so he just he's not worried about Locust with this many Colossus. No, certainly not. In fact, uh, I think Dark is going to have to pull the uh, Swarm Host back because he's actually so close there. Yeah, now all he has to do here is target down these uh, Corruptors. The Colossus will deal with absolutely everything else. Just There's way so many, too many of them. So many Corruptors here. He does blink back a little bit. Yeah, but still three of these uh, Colossus left over. More Stalkers being warped in. He'll easily kill this base off. Yeah, for sure. He's just going to back up now as the Locusts are popping out. Picking off uh, as many Corruptors as possible. Just seven left. Don't really expect any more Colossus to die here. Does have another fourth one come up. 38 Stalkers right now. Way higher supply. For our Protoss player, but that's mostly in workers, so still a strong army for, for Dark. Yeah, sure. Um, really, the Swarm Host of the Corruptor is the only hope right now. And that's going to be a GG. Okay. We knew that game was over for just a little bit there, but uh, you can't blame Dark for trying. Certainly. Uh, really nicely done there by Avenge. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was a great game. Really well played, but let's not forget, he got a nice build order advantage. It was an early pool against a quick forge, yep. and he was able to to secure himself a nice spot. And then Dark went into really quick speed and like kind of low econ Swarmos. And the thing is, Avenge scouted everything. He just always had the right counter. It was really well played. Yeah, Avenge got a lead very early on and just never let go of that lead. Uh, but this is not done yet, guys. Avenge has to win this game or the next. Dark, though, is in some hot water. Dark has not won a single game today. I really, the last thing I expected was for Dark to go out in last I place. I know, right? I think he's just such a strong player, uh, but today it's just not working out for him. Flash looking too godly, and Avenge just playing the games of his life, really. Yeah. All right. The map is going to be overgrowth. Let's well. see how Dark and Avenge open here. Last game, the big story is really in the build orders mm -hmm. that the two players picked and, and how... You know, I mean, there's always some risk in, in, in any build you're going to take. Yeah. It's a bit of a poker game. 
uh, trying to read what you think your opponent's going to do uh, and how he's going to play this. It's, it's true. Uh, you know, I'd like to see Avenge do a crazy all-in here. Yeah, I really I, would. I'd say why not. Take the he, risk. Because he gets to pick the next.